Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the CTF series. I know I haven't uploaded in this series, uh, you know, for one week now, so we're back at it again. And uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at Topo 1, which I believe was uh, released on the 12th of July 2018. Now, I was to cover this uh, in the previous week, but I had issues importing it. Uh, but th thank you to all of you in the comment section. Uh, or actually on my Instagram who helped me get it up and running. So uh, again, I got it up and running and uh, to be honest, quite easy to solve, but it did have some areas where uh, or areas that I would like to uh, to essentially explain uh, when it comes down to privilege escalation. All right. Now, uh, I am going to be doing the other ones like the Lin security and uh, a few others of the harder ones on uh, Volnub. Uh, I've just been really busy. As you can see, I'm currently on my laptop. I'm away from my main computer and I thought, you know, why not make a video uh, this morning? So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with it. So I just did it a few seconds or a few minutes ago and uh, I'm ready to explain every aspect of it here. All right. Now, this is an extremely uh, beginner uh, type of machine in terms of exploitation. Uh, the part that I really wanted to explain was privilege escalation. So let's get started. So I have it running uh, on uh, on um, on a server, and uh, it's currently running on my local air network here, and it's running on the uh, local IP 192.168.1.106. Now, for those of you who recommended that I use Nmap uh, on the terminal, I will do so right now. So uh, let me just go into my root here and uh, enter my password there. And let me clear that up. So Nmap SV SC, whoops, sorry, SC, and we'll do an uh, OS and an aggressive scan here. 192.168.1.106. All right, so I'm going to hit enter. And I think I explained this scan. Uh, if I haven't, we're essentially searching for, we are performing um, banner grabbing or uh, fingerprinting. Uh, we're essentially scanning with the default scripts, that being from the uh, NMAP scripting engine. We're doing an OS scan and an aggressive scan. So quite, uh, quite comprehensive in terms of the amount of information we'll get back. All right, so you can see uh, it returned the results and we're scanning for a thousand of the most popular ports. So 997 were closed. So that means we have three ports running. We have uh, port 22, which is SSH running OpenSSH 6.7 uh, P1, which uh, is not vulnerable as far as I know. And you can confirm that by searching for any exploits using a uh, search exploit or whatever uh, you choose to use, whether it's a vulnerability scanning tool, etc. Uh, we then have a, a web application running on, uh, you know, port 80 standard stuff, no, uh, uh, no SSL running. So that's good. That's running Apache 2.4.1 and the HTTP title tells us uh, it's running clean blog, uh, which is essentially a bootstrap theme. We'll check that out in a second. And we have uh, RPC here. Uh, we, have the, we have RPC bind both on TCP and UDP. I ran a UDP scan. No additional ports were found, but I'll get into that. We can see it's running a Linux. Uh, it isn't able to tell us the exact version, so it might it might be running Debian, uh, although we will get into that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the web application first and let's see what's running over there. We can inspect this uh, 192.168.1.106. All right, and uh, you can see that it is uh, a theme here, a blog theme uh, by uh, essentially by using Bootstrap. And uh, yeah, this is essentially a template here. No one has really edited it. So if we view the page source, I think that can confirm what we were talking about. Yeah, so you can see this is a simple template that, you know, you can use to set up a simple website. So robots.txt, let's search for anything there. And yeah, we weren't able to get anything there. Next, I'm going to run a derb on this. So uh, let me just do this right over here. Derb, and uh, I'm just going to paste that in there. And that's going to use the uh, common word list. And we're going to let that scan. Now, in the meantime, we can also, uh, let me just open up Terminator here. We can uh, use the RPC client to see if we can get a null session here. Uh, so for some reason, Terminator is taking oil. It's probably because I'm recording. All right, so RPC client and uh, 192.168.1.106. And I'm going to hit enter. And hopefully, yeah, it does provide us. So I'm going to hit enter and uh, yeah, we weren't able to connect over there. All right. So nothing important there. Looks like we got results here. 
uh, we've got admin, IMG, mail, manual. So the rest all seem to be uh, default Apache stuff. So I'm just going to copy the admin here. Uh, well, not Apache. Some of them obviously belong to the theme. So let me just uh, copy this link here or we can just essentially open it uh, right over here. So admin and oops, my bad. Sorry about that, guys. Um, admin like so. And we can see that we have a notes.txt uh, file right over here. So if I click on that, uh, there we are. We can see that uh, it is telling us a uh, note to self. Let me just see if I can uh, zoom in here. Yeah, like so. So note to self, I need to change my password. Um, and the password seems to be 123 Ted123. So we can basically tell that the username is Ted. Uh, is too outdated, but the technology isn't. My thing uh, or the thing I prefer to do is go fishing or watching soccer. All right. So, yeah, it looks like these are simple notes that uh, are being left by the admin. This is something very uncommon. But as, as I said, the whole uh, the great thing about this uh, machine uh, is in the privilege escalation. Now, uh, sorry about that, guys, if you can hear rain in the background, it is raining very heavily. So I do apologize for that. Um, so, yeah, this looks to be the password and we can tell that the username is Ted. So this is probably access for SSH. So let me just open up my terminal. Sorry about that. And if we just go back up here, yeah, we can see that we have SSH running. So I'm just going to stop the derb scan here and we'll say SSH uh, and we'll say Ted at 192.168.1.106. I'm going to enter and hopefully it tells us, prompts us to enter the password. I'm going to hit enter and yes. All right. So uh, we can essentially get started now. So it takes us into Ted at topo. Excellent. So if we type in our ID, we can see that, yeah, we are using Ted here and uh, we can start enumerating some information. See uh, cat Etsy issue and you hit enter. And again, it doesn't give us any information in regards to the operating system. Now uh, I was able to, um, uh, we, we can use tools like wget to essentially get files from remote servers. Uh, one thing I did re realize is that if we were able to get any exploits, which it is vulnerable, if you run the Linux exploit suggester, GCC isn't installed and we can't install any software on in terms of our account. So yeah, we pro we have to go about privilege escalation in different way. Now, of course, if you want to use the uh, Linux exploit suggester, uh, which I have right over here. So we can, I can also show you that we are able to execute it and get it running. And the exploits all require a, a compiler at least for you to compile the exploits. Now, of course, you can run the, you can compile the exploits on another machine and then copy them over, you know, via uh, a, a remote local web server. But again, uh, you can go ahead and do that and let me know what you guys find. I think I was able to do that with one of them, but I'll, I'll show you this. So if I just print my working directory, you can see that we have uh, we are in home Ted and um, yeah, if we try and go to, for example, into the root directory, yeah, we get uh, permission denied. So we're essentially looking for the flag here. Uh, so let me just clear the terminal here. By the way, let me just uh, increase the font size there so you can see what's going on. Uh, now, as I was saying, uh, if I was to use wget and uh, essentially paste that in there, sorry, it looks like it already pasted in wget for us. So um, this is for the Linux exploit suggest. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to get it for us. So if we type in enter, we can see that, uh, yeah, we have one of the exploits that I was actually, uh, I was going to tell you about. So thank God it's there because I wanted to, to just demonstrate something. So, you know, if I was to use nano and I say uh, three, four, nine, and I hit enter, you can see that we have the compilation. This exploit does work. You can try it out. Uh, you can run the Linux exploit just suggest I won't tell you which one it is so uh, so you guys can practice with that so you know you can copy the compilation uh, the compilation code right over here all the arguments of course it uses G, uh, GCC and we hit enter and as you can see it doesn't have any of these packages uh, and the uh, the new uh, C compiler installed so we can't really compile anything locally which is sad which means we have to compile it you know on another computer. Uh, which is not the end of the world, but as I said, uh, privilege escalation, it's much more fun to go about this uh, locally. So uh, again, 
what you need to do is of course what i would normally try and do is type in sudo l to essentially see what files i can access or what files have you know uh, the suid permissions if that doesn't work out then that means that we need to use the uh, you, you know we need to use the uh, the locate or the find command to find files that uh, have the executable permissions now how do we do this well uh, this is the command that we use so we say find uh, and we type in find and uh, you know perm I've, I think I've talked about this syntax before so find perm uh, user soup uh, suid so then we say type uh, sorry uh, the type is like that because we, have the, we got, are going to specify the file type and uh, the file type going to be found in the dev null folder again this is not output remember because output uh, you'd have to close the statement to have output so dev null and we hit enter and uh, for some reason uh, it looks like my syntax is wrong over here uh, yeah it is wrong that is type sorry and we hit enter and uh, there we are we're getting the files that have uh, super user uh, that can be executed or have suid privileges we can see that we have python which means we can try and execute or get a python uh, a pty shell uh, you know through python so let's actually do this right now um, so you, most of you might be confused now if you haven't heard of this it's essentially spawning a tty shell so uh, to do this uh, let's just clear that out um, python essentially is a very good way of doing this so uh, we can say python c and then we uh, import uh, pty and then you know we say pty dot spawn and then in here you put your interpreter or the shell that you want really so bin uh, shell and of course you can always expect oh, sorry not not born we don't want born there man come on so shell and then we close that up and we uh, hit enter and hopefully that gives us a shell here so yeah it did we hit enter user id looks like we did get root so let me just see if i can move into my root folder uh yes it uh, i can move so if we just cut the flag here oops flag dot txt and we hit enter and voila we got the flag here uh, the flag is own lab passion comes with practice so yeah a pretty simple machine i don't know how long i've been recording so far i'll probably have to check yeah i've recorded about 12 minutes so very very simple machine in terms of exploitation it really isn't exploitation because you're essentially logging in with credentials so for all of you that were asking uh, essentially how to go about this many of you are trying to go about it you know by trying to get exploits on and then you need to compile it off and then you need to set up a web server using apache like for example uh how i i would have compiled it is when this is in terms of using an exploit uh, or you know privilege escalation i would go on my kali workstation or my ubuntu workstation that has the uh, that has gcc installed i would compile it there and then put the exploit file on my web server using apache and then connect to it using this uh, using this uh, machine and uh, you know you get the exploit and you can run it so that also works i showed you the exploit that you can use uh, you know go ahead and use it and let me know how you guys find it um, another thing i want to tell you guys uh, is the discord server will be up this weekend i've been working on setting it up and uh, i'll be notifying you when it's up It'll, i'll probably post it as an update on on my on all my social media uh, platforms and on the youtube channel via the community um the community uh sorry uh, functionality all right so that being said that's going to be it for this video guys if you found value in this video please leave a like down below if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on my website and i'll be seeing you in the next video peace guys